everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Happy Wednesday. I'm so glad you're here today. Um, I am continuing to film ahead, so I'm not even going to tell you what day it is because it doesn't make a difference. Um, I do have a video coming out today, though, later on this afternoon that I think you guys will really enjoy uh, by the time this one is up. That one's already up. If you haven't watched it, go back and watch it. It is on um, tips and tricks for beginning spinners, both drop spindle and wheel spindle. Spin, wheel spinning say that fast five times um and so that one will be up and i am um working through some videos right now continuing to film ahead because of a few things going on in my life um one of those being a new grandbaby which at this point still has not showed up he's nice and cozy um and he is seven days past due right now there's a little glimmer of the end today coming and I have a feeling by the end of the week we will have a new grandchild so um we just wait <laughs> um but yeah I am I have I started a list this morning of videos that I want to film um to get them out of my brain and onto paper um we moved in here two years ago next week I think and <clears throat> I <laughs> I was looking for something this morning um, to do with the video I wanted to film. Still haven't found that something. I have to sit down and think where I would have stuck. It's not just one thing. It's several things. Um, and I have no idea where they're at. But I realized in going through boxes this morning that I still have stuff that I have not unpacked yet. Um, it is still in the garage. And... It's, it's not like a big deal because technically it is storage, but it's boxes of fiber um, and yarn. We all have those stashes. And I found this box of fiber and it's a big box. And um, I have my alpaca and pygora. For those of you who are new here, I raise angora rabbits. I raise angora goats now. I've also raised alpacas and pygoras in the past. Um, I do still have a stash of alpaca that I work with and a pygora fiber that I work with. I had them for many years. Um, but this box that I found out in the garage was chock full of bits and pieces. Some of the stuff, I have, I, I have no idea what it is. Um, shame on me, I know. Um, but I, do, I did find a bag... Um, of different fibers and I received it I'm trying to remember what that used to be called it was a fiber exchange with people I can't even remember what the name of it was but it was the last year I did it um, this is a bag of different fibers from I want to say her name on Instagram is fiber trek I'll have to look that up and put her link below but she she visits different fiber farms and she was partnered up with me the last time I did the uh, the fiber exchange, which I wish I could remember what that was called. That was a lot of fun. I've, I've forgotten about it. That was pre-COVID. So it's been a long time. And her bag that she sent me is all really unique. Not all of it unique, but some unique and some fun um, fibers and things like that. Some um, oh locks and stuff. And it is all still in the bag that she sent it to me in. And all of the labels, <clears throat> although they're not still attached to the fiber, all of the labels are in the bottom of the bag. And so I know what's in that bag. So I think I'm going to de-stash that and do a video here with some of that stuff. And while I was doing that, <clears throat> I came up with some more ideas. And so I'm kind of going through some de-stashing my fiber. I want to jump into some more spinning videos. That's where my passion truly is, is spinning, whether it be drop spindling or wheel spindling. Um, and I have spent the last two days out in my garden because it's that time of the year again too. And so I'm actually in between being outside in the garden. Um, I'm going to film this video and then I'm going to go back up to the garden. Uh, but I wanted to get this video in today because we have rain moving in. And this video needs some sunshine. Although I look out and it's gotten kind of cloudy out. But we're going to try it. Um, so today I'm hopping on to teach you about Kool-Aid solar dyeing. 
Um, there is two different ways to go about doing this. Um, I don't think I've ever done this before. Um, I don't remember. Maybe years ago I tried it, but I honestly do not ever remember doing this. So I ran to the store today and <laughs> I have not had or purchased Kool-Aid. I don't even think I bought it for my kids. Um, it's not great stuff, but if you are from the 70s like I am, you have 70s is a very nostalgic time period in my brain. Um, but you have great memories of Kool-Aid. Um, the Kool-Aid commercials still in my brain today. I can still see the Kool-Aid guy coming through the wall. Um, but And I can picture my mom's Tupperware pitcher. Um, and we drank Kool-Aid every day, all day. Um, especially in the summer, she'd mix up a container of Kool-Aid. And <clears throat> that's what we would have. And it's just so funny to think back now because I wouldn't feed it to my kids today, but <laughs> it's a whole nother topic. So I didn't even know if they still made the little packs of Kool-Aid. Sure enough, they do. Um, and they look exactly the same as when we were, I feel like when I was a kid, this is what it looked like almost exactly. Uh, so I bought a couple of each of the, they didn't have a ton of flavors. I don't know how many flavors there are anymore. I bought two of each flavor that they had um, that were different colors. So you're looking for the color in these. Um, and this is a great dyeing technique for kids. Um, like I said, you could do it two different ways. You can do it in the microwave or you can do it outdoors in the sun that just requires the heat. Um, and with the Kool-Aid packets, you, there's no mordant that you have to add in. So typically I add in, um, vinegar or citric acid. Um, to like my acid dyes that I use. I guess with using Kool-Aid, which it does, the first ingredient is citric acid, that's your mordant. So you just pour in this pack and it's gonna dye your fiber or your yarn. Um, this would be a great activity for kids uh, if you're looking for a summer activity coming up here soon. Um, you could get a skein of white yarn, you know, red heart yarn or whatever from Walmart and put it into smaller skeins for your kids and then have them choose some colors and dye it. Um, <clears throat> I have glass ball jars here and I have just plastic cup uh, caps for them. Um, I was trying to think of how I'm only going to do this amount. I've got three different fibers here that we're going to try and I think we'll try different colors. Um, I was thinking how you could do a bigger batch of this. Um, and this is like a legit dyeing technique. So if you like this color, uh, this is a great way to dye your fiber or yarn. I, I just, I think it would be a great way to do it. You don't, it doesn't cost a lot of money. These are easy to find. Um, but instead of doing a small batch, you can do, so I've got my iced tea sitting here and one of these, this is a half gallon. You could do a half gallon. You could get some of those, um, dollar store, uh, iced tea, um, sun tea things, those would be perfect. And I think those are like five bucks, which would be well worth it um, to continually use those over and over again to do a bigger batch. So that's what you need. So the fiber I have today, I have some Angora and this is, it's not white. I just finished spinning all my white and so I don't have any white, but this is like a light gray. It does have a little bit of dark gray in there. I think you can see so I have, this is about an ounce, I think. <clears throat> and then I have about an ounce each. Um, you can barely tell the difference. There is a slight difference. This one is alpaca, and this is a lighter colored. This is pygora, which is pygmy angora cross goats that I used to have. Um, this one has just some, um, a touch of gray to it, or a Oh, more of a beigey tone than this one. This one's more of a cream color, and this one leans more towards a grayish, very, very light gray. So I have the three different fibers, three jars. <clears throat> the tough part is going to be, um, and while I'm sitting here talking, I am going to, the alpaca was done in, um, this was machine rove, roving, um, so it looks like this. The Pygora was done as a cloud, um, which just, 
I'm going to start soaking these. Um, the pie gore has to be dehaired. So I had that professionally dehaired and then they put it into a cloud. So it's just a big poof of fiber. So I'm going to put that one in. I probably should end up labeling these because I won't be able to tell the difference. They're awful close in touch. Um, I talked that I talked about that, or I, I don't know if it's in today's video that's coming out, um, which you'll see this video in a week or so, um, where I talked about, or maybe it's in another video I did. Um, I don't know if if I were to sit down today, um, and I do, I've seen people be able to touch fiber and go, oh, that's merino or, oh, that's, you know, whatever. I don't know that I could tell the difference. I, th I know what it was. I was talking about um, the difference between English and French Angora. Um, and I think that video comes out this weekend. I would have, even after 20 years of raising the rabbits and um, spinning Angora, I would have a really hard time telling the difference between French and English. There is a slight difference. Um, whether or not, I'm getting this Angora saturated, Angora is slightly um, water resistant. So I wanna make sure it gets saturated. Um, yeah, so I don't know if I could tell the difference between, I can't between French and English. Um, I, and, and just to touch a fiber, I would have a hard time doing that. So I need to go grab a towel because I just made a mess. But let me get these saturated a little bit and then I'll be right back. Okay, I got my mess cleaned up. I've got the fiber sitting in each jar. Um, I have six different colors that I got. I'm going to use these three. These are the ones speaking to me. Um... So I'm going to do the grape, the red, raspberry, yep, and the pink lemonade. Um, I'm going to start with one pack each in each jar. Uh, and then I'm going to put it outside in the sun. Um, and then I'll hop back on later on tonight or tomorrow to finish off this so it won't be instant. Although you won't know it because I'll be right back. But I'm going to try with just one pack each. If I change that... In the process, I'll let you know at the end of the video. Another way to do this is to throw them in the microwave. So you do the same thing, just like this. And, oh, it smells really good. Oh, my childhood. <laughs> That's the grape one. It smells like uh, bubblicious grape bubble gum. I was a big gum chewer, too. Um, so you could put this in the microwave. It's the heat that activates all the... Uh, the citric acid in the dye and stuff. So I am just putting these in. Let's see if I can adjust this without turning you too much. Um, pouring them in and then I'm going to grab a um, chopstick. I always keep chopsticks around because they make great wooden stirs. So we've got pink and I have a feeling, and blue, I have a feeling with this much fiber in these, I am going to have to use that second pack. But we'll see how it does with one. And of course, it's going to depend on what you want it to, um, what color you want. Do you want a deep purple? Do you want a light purple? So that's going to make a difference too. Uh, so let me grab um, a chopstick really quick. I'm going to grab three of them so I don't transfer any of the dye over. And I'm just going to start working this in. Ooh, got my hair in that. And you can already see, I keep tilting that wrong. You can already see it, the color coming out. And I'm, I'm already thinking that I'm just going to put, oh, that's pretty. Um, I think I'm just going to put the other pack in is what I think I'm going to do. So get it mixed in. You want to make sure that your fiber is nice and saturated. Go through the middle a little bit. And while I'm talking, I'm going to add, because I do want these to be fairly deep, um, rich colors. 
Get that blue. If that blue turns out, I'm going to be really <laughs> excited about that. Look at that blue. The one color I didn't see was green. I'm trying to think of what would be maybe an apple. I don't remember Kool-Aid ever having, having like a green apple, but maybe. Um, that pink is going to be real pretty. And the grape is already fairly rich, but it is with the Angora. And I want to make sure that it is all saturated in. I have no idea. So that's what they look like. I have no idea how long this takes. Um, in the microwave, I think it's enough. I'm guessing it would be under five minutes, but I'm not sure. Maybe I'll, um, I'll try that one too and just uh, make a note of it. But it's, it's warm out. We're in the 60s today. It's partly sunny out right now. It was sunnier earlier. I should have gotten this started earlier. Um, so it is warm and we have a southwest facing, the back of our house faces the southwest. Um, and so I get full sun and by afternoon it's hot out there, uh, even when it is cooler out. So I would suspect that within a few hours these are going to be done. Um, so this is what it looks like. I'm going to put the lid on it and give it a little shake and then I'm going to sit it on the back deck and we'll go from there. Okay guys, I am on the back deck. As you can see, the sun has come back out. I have my three jars sitting here and they've already picked up color. Um, you can see with the blue one, whoops. And uh, the purple is the Angora, which like I said, um, it is a bit more uh, water resistant. So it does, um, take a bit for, and I put a lot in there. I probably put too much in for the jar the size that I had. So we'll see how it turns out. But the, uh, the blue and the pink is looking very hopeful. I can already see where the fiber is picking up the color. And I just sat them out here. It's about one o'clock and, uh, I figured I'd leave them out here at least for a few hours and see what happens. I'll keep you updated and um, yeah, I'll be back at the end of the video once. It's either going to be tonight or tomorrow. I'll see how long it takes them and we'll finish off and see what we get. Okay guys, we are back. Um, I brought in the fiber. This was the Apaca. I wanted to show you this. The color has been all saturated. That's a good thing. Here's our fiber. There you go. Um, so the color's all gone out of the water, which means it is fully saturated. I am just going to rinse this out. I think you can see, I know the light's not good in here, but I think you can see that there's not any color running out. It's clear water. Um, you don't remember, most of the time you don't have to worry about felting it unless you're doing, um, switching back from hot and cold, agitation. So just doing that um, did not felt my fiber. So there's the pink, it is really beautiful. And it smells like, it smells a little bit like the pink lemonade still. You can rinse it out with hot water or with uh, soapy water. Just remember, don't switch back and forth from hot to cold. For now, I'm just gonna stick this in here because I will set it out to dry. Now these other two, this purple is the Angora. And I know that I put way too much fiber in here. There is a little bit of color coming out, but it's more of a blue. Yeah, there is color in here. So it means um, I probably could have left this one outside for a bit longer. But for time's sake, and that one definitely smells, like I said, just like great. Um, there is, I'm going to show you what Angora does and I may re-dye this. This inside part is still 
not died because again angora is very um water resistant to some degree which is crazy so <clears throat> i put too much fiber in too little of a space if i would have cut this down to about half um and the the purple is still running out of this one but i think the the color that's there is going to be there so i may go get a couple more purple this is going to turn out to be a light so this one on the um, angora is a little bit it didn't grab quite as much i would use either a bigger space next time um, less fiber and i may re-dye that and then the blue one it's pretty clear this is the pygora that smells like blue raspberry and this one i can tell where i dropped the it has light and dark i put the color um that second time i put the second pack in i put it right on one side and you can see where i did this did it um i don't know if it's going to show up in the video more over here is a little bit darker than this side here it's still a beautiful color though i'm going to and again it smells like the raspberry i'm actually going to take all of this out um back outside and i am going to um i'm going to take it back outside and dry it tonight it was out there from about one o'clock in the afternoon it's 4 30 right now i just brought it in so you know a few hours uh, again the purple could have gone a little bit longer with a little less fiber in the jar but you guys get the idea i think um the alpaca picked up the color really good so i think it is going to depend on the fiber you're using too so i'm going to go lay this out in the sun and that's it. Um, I probably will be doing a video with spinning this. I want to show you what it spins up like too um, and what the yarn would look like. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. I'm always glad to answer those. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I hope you create something today. Bye.